When we talk about heat pumps, we're not worried about that super freezing day, the blizzard. We're worried about a 17 degree day. There are a couple things that I think are really important to understand about the way that we design and specify heat pumps for any climate. And what most people think of automatically is, oh, on this day, in this picture, the heat pump is not gonna be able to keep up. I'm gonna show you what to look for to be able to assess whether that's true. And it often is not true, but one of the things that you should understand is that manual J calculation, which is the load calculation that we all use in the United States of America to uh, calculate the maximum heating and cooling needed, is too big. It's oversizing on the heat side, and they know that. And it's they say it in manual J, which is a manual. Um, but the the reason that it's in there and that it's oversized so much, and just to give you a quick update, my parents' home which we replaced the furnace AC combo in their crawl space with a heat pump that was a hyperheat Mitsubishi system. Last year, we had three days of design temperatures and I found out that it was more than double oversized, the, the manual J calculation, what they actually needed for heat. So that house said we needed 65,000 BTUs per hour and I ran that calculation myself. What we actually needed was 30 on the, on the design day. That's a huge, issue. The reason that that's in there is because the consequence of oversizing heating is virtually nothing, except for the fact that you might think that you can't use a heat pump or that you need to use electric strip heat, which is a, basically a toaster. It's the least efficient way to heat anything. So this day is really a myth. We don't, we're not aiming for this day. And so I want to, what I want to show you is some charts. This is from the Carrier Infinity. This is a top American brand, their top of the line heat pump, uh, variable capacity. This thing does not have what we'd call hyperheat in it. The hyperheat is the ability to pull heat out of air that's even very cold, like down to zero Fahrenheit or even negative five. Um, so what this unit is able to do on a 47 degree day right here is what they're claiming that it can do around 48 or excuse me, three ton is 36. So they're even over delivering at this 47 degrees, which is what they're actually rated at. Uh, it's called AHRI as the organization that rates these things and gives you the, the sticker that you can put onto it and says, hey, here's how efficient this is and how much heat it can produce. We measure uh, the AHRI uh, standard at 47 degrees and also at 17 degrees because those are very different numbers. And like a furnace, because you're just burning something, is gonna give you a flat curve on this because you're able to do whatever you want. You're not depending on outside weather. Outside weather has nothing to do with what you're doing with this piece of equipment. This one, because it's taking heat from the out air outside, ejecting it into the house, is a little bit of a problem. So you can see we're at 47, we're over delivering the 36 kilobtus that this three ton can do. There's 12,000 BTUs per ton, so three tons would be 36. So you're getting over delivery at 47. But at 17, right down here, we're under delivering for the 36. We're not getting 36 out of this, we're getting closer to 32. So that's important to know. Also, when you get down to, if you're in a climate where this is important, when you get down to zero, this thing is doing 24. And the low end of this, normally we talk about them being variable speed and you get about a 30%. You can dial down from 100% down to 30%. And what you get at that point is a pretty broad range of variability. Down here, you're able to go from 24 to 12, roughly. So that's only a 50%. So it cuts down on your variability too. So here's the minimum heat that it can produce. Here's the maximum heat that it can produce. Let's look at the four ton. This is an interesting curve. You can see we've got this, it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up again. How very interesting. You can see down here at zero, we all have almost reached parity where it's one for one. There's no variability down here, just past zero. Knowing that what the heat is gonna be at the temperature that you really need it, which is not 47 degrees, is very important. This four ton can do at 47, can do four tons, 48,000. It could do a little bit more than that down here at 35 degrees. That's kind of interesting. And then if at 70, like 65 degrees, which you don't need heat, at virtually at all, you, you, 
you know, get a big boost in it at that point too. Uh, the five ton is pretty interesting. Now we've got this knee here and then we've got the boost and then it falls off again. So all of these very interesting. Um, and again, knowing what your design day temperature for us in Atlanta, that would be 22 degrees out of this five ton, which is supposed to be 60,000. I'm only getting about 40. That could be a problem. And the way that you want this to look is like this. So this is a Mitsubishi hyperheat and there are, they call it hyperheat, different manufacturers and carrier being one of them has different names for this. I can't remember what carrier's name for it is. It doesn't matter. I was just looking for one of these. This is a flat line all the way from 47 down to uh, five. And then past that, it still can pump out 76%, which is way better than some of these numbers that we were looking at over here with the infinity. So this is the kind of curve you're looking for. This is gonna come from the manufacturer. They're not lying. But AHRI is not gonna tell you this data because they don't wanna reward companies for making better equipment insanely. They want everybody to be playing on the same playing field. So the people who make one speed simple equipment are able to get credit and get their pat on the back, just like the people who make really great stuff. So this is what you're really looking for. This is why we're not worried about that super freezing day, the blizzard. We're worried about a 17 degree day. That's not that out of the question for most places in the US, um, even Texas where we had that big freeze for a week a couple years ago. So getting the hyperheat to not give you a five degree or a zero degree turnaround, but to give you a flat line from 47 all the way down to 17, and then south of that if you need it, that is really what this hyperheat is all about. So don't think that it, just because you're not in New Hampshire, you don't need a hyperheat system. People in North Carolina, people in Atlanta, uh, need hyperheat because we got these 20 degree temperatures that we're trying to deal with. So please do make sure that you're using science as you're shopping for this stuff. Uh, comment below if you have anything else to add about heat pump, especially curves and the documentation and stuff like that. Like, subscribe, tune in next time.